In 2015, Canadians will proudly host the World Cup of Women's Soccer. Team captain Christine Sinclair and the rest of the Olympic bronze medal winning Canadian women's national team will take on the world on the home stage, with the final to be played in Vancouver's BC Place Stadium. Women's soccer is one of the most popular women's sports in the world. But it wasn't always this way. When I was a little girl in Coquitlam, British Columbia, I watched from the sidelines as my four brothers played for the Blue Mountain Soccer Club. I played in the backyard, but when I asked if I could join a team, I was told that girls don't play soccer. That's not a rule, I thought. But it was. In 1920, the English Football Association decreed that it would not sanction women's soccer. The ban lasted 50 years. The popularity of one particular team, the Dick Kerr Ladies, threatened the men's game enough for the official association to ban women from playing. By 1975, when I was nine, I was delighted to find out that girls now could play soccer, and I proudly took my place on the roster of the Blue Mountain Royals. For the next several years, we did play. We improved, and the sport grew. My team even traveled to neighboring towns to demonstrate it to others. In 1973, there were only three girls' soccer clubs across British Columbia. By 1980, there were 317 teams in BC. In 2002, there were more than 307,000 women and girls playing nationally. But the pinnacle of amateur sport, the Sun Tournament of Soccer Champions, sponsored by the Vancouver Sun newspaper, eluded us. Soccer was BC's most high-profile amateur sport from the 1950s through the 1980s and beyond. Boys who got to play in this Elite Cup tournament, which pitted the two best teams in the coastal region against each other, played in Swangard Stadium, a real stadium. They were marched in by bagpipes in a parade of champions. Had their games covered by real newspaper and TV reporters, and the Sun soccer boy and his runner-up were featured in the Vancouver Sun. But for the first few years of organized girls' soccer in BC, girls were not allowed to play in the Sun Cup. Then, in 1981, more enlightened minds prevailed. It was the girls' turn to play at Swangard. With a parade. Bagpipes. An announcer calling out their names an all-star team, and a Sun soccer girl and runner-up being featured on the front page of the Vancouver Sun sports section. In a happy coincidence that highlights what a hotbed of soccer my hometown of Coquitlam was, three teams from the Blue Mountain Soccer Club, the Royals, the Devils, and the Rangers, qualified for the inaugural Sun Cup for girls. Those same three teams emerged victorious in the top three age groups at the first Sun Cup, which also served as the provincial championship for girls at that time. The Sun Soccer Girl was Jane Norman of the Blue Mountain Rangers. Soccer Girl runner-up was Karen Dawes of the Blue Mountain Royals, my team. Fully half the All-Star team was from Blue Mountain, and the Rangers were named Outstanding Team of the Tournament. It was a moment of immense pride for our teams, our families, and our community. One local sport trader said that it was seeing our team play that convinced him that girls and soccer belonged together. My team, the Royals, returned to the Sun Cup in 1982, winning again. We went on to be Western Canadian champions and placed second in Canada. One of our members, Brenda Yamamoto was named Sun Soccer Girl runner-up, and others were all-stars. It was a thrill, but nothing matched the thrill of that first Sun Cup 
when Coquitlam girls proved that we deserved the same respect on the turf as the boys did. Someone we played against regularly, Jerry Donnelly of the Port Moody Flames, went on to join Canada's first ragtag version of a women's national team in 1986. She scored Canada's first and second goals ever. Christine Sinclair, Canada's current captain, wouldn't be born until a couple of years after that first Sun Cup, but she went on to play in its successor, the Coastal Cup, in her formative years. So when you see Canada's national team take to the pitch this June, and when you see little girls, and teenage girls, and young women, and the over 30 women, and the South African grannies, all enjoying the game of soccer, take a moment to remember the girls who pioneered the game in British Columbia in the 1970s and 80s.